Many times I've talked about academic benefits for studying music, but did you know there's a lot of non-academic, some health benefits for studying music too? So that's what I'd like to talk about today. If you are a homeschooler looking for ways to easily and affordably include a quality music education in your homeschool, you've come to the right place. This is the Music in Our Homeschool podcast. I'm Gina Mayo, homeschooling mom of eight and music teacher for over 30 years. There is an amazing connection between music and health. So let me tell you a story about two incredible people who are leading the charge in exploring this fascinating relationship. Renee Fleming is a world-renowned opera singer known for her beautiful soprano voice. Despite her incredible talent, Renee has faced tough times dealing with somatic pain. That's pain in the body that's connected to the mind. Specifically, it's the body's way of distracting her from the mental anxiety brought from performance. But instead of letting it get her down, she decided to do a deep dive into understanding why this was happening to her. Renee discovered some Something incredible. Scientists and doctors were studying music and its effects on the brain. And one of those scientists is Dr. Francis Collins, a doctor who headed the National Institute of Health, the world's largest supporter of biomedical research for 12 years until 2021. He said, I want to find every possible way to help people who are suffering from illnesses or other kinds of life experiences that are limiting their ability to flourish. I want to make everybody flourish. And music is such a powerful source of that kind of influence. Together, Renee Fleming and Dr. Collins are champions for using music to improve health. Recently, they talked about their music and health initiative that's been going strong for the last seven years. And I will link to that article in the show notes or the description. They believe that creative arts like music should be an integral part of health care. Imagine having music therapists in all hospitals helping patients heal with the power of song. But it's not just about singing for fun. Although that's important for our health too, scientists are finding that music has a profound impact on our brains. For example, did you know that parts of the brain responsible for processing sound actually grow larger in people who start musical training early in life? What's even more surprising is that when experienced singers like Renee Fleming think about singing, their brain is more active than when they actually sing. It just shows how deeply music is wired into our brains and every part of our brain. One study found that singing with others in a choir can have amazing health benefits. People who sang together in a choir experienced less pain, felt more generous, and even had increased levels of oxytocin. That's the hormone associated with happiness and well-being. One of the most surprising discoveries was that singing in a choir can help with postpartum depression. Who would have thought that something as simple as singing could have such a powerful effect on our mental health? Neuroscientists at Johns Hopkins have been studying music's impact on dementia patients, and another hospital at the University of Florida has incorporated creative arts into its care of individuals who have suffered traumatic brain injuries. One example is the former Congresswoman, Gabby Giffords, who is playing the French horn to help rewire her brain and rebuild her ability to speak. So how about adding some singing to your homeschool? You could start by just singing together at home. I have several courses that can give you some guidance if you don't know where to start with that. Singing Made Easy, A Folk Song a Week, 10 Songs All Preschoolers Should Know, and great hymns of the faith. One quote from the article said, if you look at the brain of somebody who had intense musical training before age seven, you can actually see that part of the cortex is a little larger than in somebody who did not have it. So our brains are responding to the environment very clearly in that way. This is something I've known from personal experience for a long time, not specifically that the cortex grows larger, but it's obvious that early childhood music education makes a difference. I want you to know that you can find everything that you're looking for for early childhood music and movement at Music in Our Homeschool. 
especially with Kinderbach. I am so happy to have found Kari Greger and she allowed us to be able to sell Kinderbach through music in our homeschool. So you will definitely want to check that out if you still have children ages seven and under. So that is our episode for today, the non-academic health benefits from music education. And I would love to know your thoughts. Do you have another non-academic health benefit that you have experienced from music? Please leave a comment or send me an email. You can write to Gina at musicinourhomeschool.com. That's Gina with an E. And I will see you next time.